Hello everyone. Hope all of you are doing great. So today we are going to discuss a workshop, Quant Accelerator workshop. So what we are going to do, just uh, get an idea what we are going to do in the workshop. We are not going to study any new topic or discuss any new topic in this workshop. What we are exactly going to do in this workshop is we are going to solve some uh, tough level questions or median difficulty level questions of whatever we have discussed till now. So this workshop uh, deals with the only type of questions uh, which we have discussed also but the level of difficulty would be little bit higher as compared to the uh, uh, questions we have discussed in our classes. So here this is just a kind of a revision you can say or a one, uh, one notch above questions available here in this workshop which we are going to discuss. So we are not going to cover again I am uh, telling you we are not going to cover a new topic here we are just going, going to discuss some medium difficulty level or difficult questions in this workshop so let's start the workshop so let's start with the first question just try to answer this question hope you all have already attempted this question so it still take 10 15 seconds to read the question first Okay, I hope you all have read the question. Let's read it uh, once again with me. So, question is saying a test consists of 50 questions. Each correct answer fetches 3 marks. For each wrong answer, 3 fourths of the mark is deducted. Patanjali uh, wrote this test attempted all questions. He scored 120 marks. Find the number of questions he correctly answered. So what we need to find out here, we need to find out out of uh, total 50 questions, how many questions Patanjali would have correctly answered. That is the target of this question to find out. So how we are going to do it? Uh, first, let us assume Patanjali got uh, X number of uh, that the number of questions that the student or the Patanjali answered correctly is X. So if Patanjali answered X question correctly, so how many questions have been uh, wrongly attempted by Patanjali that we have to find out that is going to be 50 minus x because total number of questions is 50 and the student the Patanjali has attempted all the 50 questions and if he has attempted all the 50 questions and out of those 50 questions x questions were correctly done by Patanjali then how many would have been wrongly done by Patanjali 50 minus x so for every correct uh, question Patanjali would have been awarded with marks 3 so for x correct question Patanjali would have got 3x marks and for every wrong question uh, 3 fourths of the marks is deducted so minus 3 4 marks is awarded 3 fourths is deducted or you can say minus 3 fourths is awarded so and uh, Patanjali have done how many question wrongly 50 minus x so for all of those 50 minus x questions 3 fourths of the marks is deducted so the marks uh, uh, Patanjali scored by Patanjali is going to be 120. So what is this uh, total marks? That is 3x. 3x is the marks which Patanjali has got from the questions which he had done correctly minus 3 fourth of 50 minus x. 3 fourth of 50 minus x is the uh, marks which Patanjali uh, which has been deducted from the marks of Patanjali because Patanjali has done 50 minus questions, 50 minus x questions incorrectly. And that total marks is equal to 120. Now, after solving, we can easily get the value of x. So, how to solve this? Take 4 as LCM 4, and then take 4 to the other side. 4 into 120 will become 480. And 4 3 is a 12x minus 3 5. 3 into 50 is 150. And minus minus will become plus. So, plus 3x is equal to 480. So, 12x plus 3x will become 15x minus 150 is going to be 480 or 15x is going to be 630 or x is equal to 40 and what was x x was the total number of uh, questions that the student answered correctly so a student has answered how many questions correctly 42 question correctly so choice a is your answer i hope it is clear to everyone what we have done we have just assumed x to be the number of questions answered correctly by the student so if x is the number of questions that student has answered correctly then how many questions the student have answered wrongly it is going to be 50 minus x and for each question correctly answered marks awarded was 3 and for each wrongly answered marks deducted was 3 4 and total marks scored by Patanjali is 120. So 3x minus 3 fourth of 50 minus x is going to be 120. 
and accordingly we have calculated the value of x which is the number of questions done by patanjali correctly and has been asked in the question so option a is the answer okay let's move on to next question just read this question once take 20 seconds time to read this question okay so i hope you all have read the question so and you have attempted this question earlier uh, because this handout was available to you earlier also so i hope you have attempted so just let's uh, discuss this question so let's just read this question once with me the total expenses of a hostel consists of two parts so there are two parts of total expenses which is one part is fixed and the other part varies directly with the number of occupants in the hostel or the number of students which are living in the hostel so when it had 150 occupants its total expenses were 190000 when it had 240 occupants its total expenses was uh, 235000 find its total expenses when it had 350 occupants that is the question which has been asked so let's just try to solve this question total expenses of hostel consists of two parts first part is fixed and the other part is varying or the other part is variable so how that part is varying that part is varying uh, is a variable amount and that part is varying depending upon the number of occupants in the uh, hostel so if number of occupants is n so we can say the variable part v is directly proportional to n as many uh, occupants will increase then the variable part will also increase and as the occupants will de decrease variable part will also decrease but the fixed part remains the same that you have to pay any of whether there are number of any number of occupants you have to pay that fixed part for sure so variable part is directly proportional to the number of occupants so we can say v is equal to kn where k is a constant of proportionality which converts proportionality into equality we have discussed in ratios part in the variation part of the ratio so v is equal to kn we know that so now the total expense e will be e is f plus v and v is how much kn so now new equation becomes total expenses e is equal to f plus kn now we know two situations when there were 150 occupants total expenses was 190000 and when occupants increases to 240 the total expenses increase to 235000 just plug in the values what we will getting first equation is total expense become 190000 when there were 150 occupants when the value of n is 150 so this is our equation 190000 is equal to f plus 150k and when this total number of occupants becomes 240 then the total expense become 235000 so 235000 is going to be f plus 240k i hope it is clear now after solving uh, we will be getting the value of f and k what is the value of f 500 and the uh, sorry 115000 and the value of k is 500 we can easily solve two variable two equation we all know how to solve this so now what is the uh, what what has been asked in the question what is the total expense when it had 350 occupants so total expense when it had 350 occupants e is equal to again f plus kn so f here is 11000 uh, 115000 and what is your uh, k here k is 500 number of occupants is 350 so 115000 plus 500 into 350 will become 290000 so answer is b option 290000 but this is very clerical approach i think you all uh, whosoever have done this question you have must have done like this or most of you have done like this but there is one more approach to solve this question rather than going for two variable two and two equation approach we can solve this question but, uh, without using equations how can we do this just have an idea so just look at the alternate approach to solve this question how we can do this uh, we know one thing what we know when there were 150 occupants the total expense was 190000 and when number of occupants increased from 150 to 240 the total expense increased from 190000 to 235000 so when there is a increase of 150 to 240 means there is a increase of 90 when 90 occupants increase the expense of total increases from 190000 to 235000 and what is this increase 190000 to 235000 is going to be 45000 so when number of occupants 
increases by 90 when 90 occupants increases the total expense increases by 45000 so for uh, if number of if one occupant increase then the increase in expense is going to be 45000 upon 90 because for, if 90 of the number of occupant increases the total increase in the expenditure was 45000 rupees so if only one uh, occupant would have been increased then that increase in expenditure would have been 45000 upon 90 which is 500 okay so for each occupant increment there is an increase of 500 rupees in total expenses this we know now okay now what is happening here uh, when it had 240 occupants the total expenditure was 235000 now we need to find out the total expenditure when it had 350 occupants so from 240 to 350 there is an increase of 110 occupants so we know that if uh, one occupant increases the increase in expenditure is 500 rupees so for 110 uh, occupant increase the increase in expenditure is going to be 110 into 500 which turns out to be 55,000. So total expenditure has to be increased to around uh, 2,35,000 plus 55,000. So it will become 2,90,000 which is the uh, expense when there were 350 occupants. Uh, let me just explain this question once again of what we, I have done. I have done it in the unitary method. If number of occupants increase from 150 to 240, there is an increment of 90 occupants. When 90 occupants increases, the total cost or the total expenses increase from 1,90,000 to 2,35,000 which is an increase of 45,000 rupees. So for 90 occupant increment, there is an increase of uh, uh, 45,000 rupees in the total expenses. So if uh, 90 occupants increase, increase of 45,000 was there. So if one occupant will increase, what is the increase in the expenditure? It is going to be 45,000 upon 90 which is 500. So for each occupant increment, there is an increase of 500 rupees in the total expenditure. Now uh, from 240 to 350, there is an increment of 110 occupants. So if 110 occupant increases, how much would be the change in the expenditure? It is going to be 110 into 500 which is 55,000. So from 2,35,000 it becomes 2,90,000. Why? Because 2,35,000 plus 55,000 is going to be 2,90,000. So this is how we can solve this question without going for the equation. And you need not to write this also. I have just written it just to explain you. So that you can have the idea what, what has been uh, going here. Okay. I hope it is clear to everyone. Let's move on to next question. Question number three. Just try this question. Just uh, read this question. Take 10-15 seconds to read this question. Okay, let's discuss this. Uh, what is this question saying? When the price of rice is 15, increased by 15%, the quantity of rice purchased decreased by 20%. What is the percentage change in the amount spent on rice? So what is amount spent on rice? Total amount spent on rice, can I say this is equal to price per unit into number of units consumed or the quantity consumed? We can say this or not? Yes, of course we can say this. Okay, so first let's try to solve this by traditional approach. Then we will look at some of the alternate approaches to solve this question. So what is given here? So let us uh, assume price of ru rice be rupees 10 per kg or you can assume rupees 100 per kg or you can assume x rupees per kg. So I have assumed here as price of rice to be rupees 10 per kg earlier. Okay, and he purchases 5 kg of rice. I have assumed both the things. What I have assumed? I have assumed price also and I have assumed quantity also earlier. So earlier there was a price of rupees 10 per kg and I have, I have been purchasing 5 kg of the rice. So total expenditure incurred by me was 10 into 5 which is 50 rupees. So I was spending rupees 50 earlier. Why? Because the price was 10 rupees and what is the quantity I was purchasing? 5 kg of rice I was purchasing. Okay, now what happened is price of rice is increased by 15%. So what is the 15% of 10? It is going to be uh, 1.5. So new price will become 10 plus 1.5 which is 11.5 rupees per kg. Earlier price was 10 rupees. Now price has increased by 15%. So now price per kg will become 11.5 rupees. 
and the quantity of rice purchase decrease by 20% and what is the 20% of 5 it is going to be 1 so new quantity will become 4 kg 5 minus 1 4 kg now I am purchasing rice at 11.5 rupees per kg because the price has increased I have decreased the consumption by 20% so now I am consuming only 4 kg rice instead of 5 kg rice now what is my total expenditure today it is going to be 11.5 into 4 which comes out to be rupees 46 so if my expenditure today is 46 and earlier how uh, how much I was spending I was spending rupees 50 so now I am spending less so my total expenditure have been decreased I hope it is clear but how much percentage how much to find out how much percentage we need to take the help of the percentage change what is percentage change final minus initial divide by initial into 100 so 50 minus 46 divide or the change divided by change divided by the initial into 100 so earlier it was 50 now it becomes 46 the changes of 4 units 50 minus 46 is 4 divided by 50 into 100 it is 8 percent decrement I hope it is clear to everyone you can assume here the price of uh, rice to be x rupees per kg and the quantity purchase was y rupees total expenditure was x y then the price become a 50 uh, 15 percent more or 23 by 20 times of x and the quantity become 20 percent less or 4 by 5 of x new expenditure would have been 23 by 20 into 4 by 5 of x y and accordingly you have taken the difference x y x y would have been cancelled out in the numerator and denominator and you would you have got the same answer Okay, all these approach are the traditional approaches to solve this question, but we are not going to solve this question by using this traditional approach. What we are going to discuss, uh, we are going to do this question by uh, some alternate approach. What kind of alternate approach? Let's look for alternate approach one, which we have discussed in percentage change. What we have discussed in percentage change, we have discussed successive percentage change. So can I do this question by successive? Yes, I can do this question by using successive percentage change also. Why? What is successive percentage? If a resultant quantity is a product of two variables and one is increasing by something and other is also increasing or decreasing by something, then we can find out the overall change in the resultant quantity by using some formula which is successive formula. So I hope you all have studied that in the percentages. So I can use a percentage also. The price of rice is increased by 15% and the quantity of rice purchase is decreased by 20%. So we can use the formula x plus y plus xy by 100 but y is decreasing so we can use it as x minus y minus xy by 100. We have to use the negative sign for whatever quantity is decreasing. So price per unit is increasing by 15% so it is plus 15 and quantity of rice is decreasing by 20% so it is minus 20. So 15 minus 20 minus 15 into 20 divided by 100 turns out to be minus 8%. And if answer is coming in negative, that means overall quantity is decreasing by 8%. So answer is going to be uh, our C option, which is 8% decrease. So answer is 8% decrease. I hope it is clear to everyone. This is alternate approach number one, where we can use successive percentage in, instead of assuming something and doing like that. Okay. Let's look at one more alternate approach to solve this question. Uh, we have started in percentage. Whatever questions we can do by successive, we can do it also by, yes, you have got the right answer, multiplying factor or the overall multiplying factor. So can I use the concept of multiplying factor here? Yes, of course we can use it. So let's just try this question by solving it by multiplying factor also. When the price of rice is increased by 15%, uh, 15% 15, 15 fraction equivalent is going to be 3 by 20. If something is increased by 15% or 3 by 20, how much it has become? 1 plus 3 by 20. 1 plus 3 by 20 is going to be 23 by 20 times. And the quantity purchase is decreased by 20%. What is the fraction equivalent of 20%? It is going to be 1 by 5. And it is decreased by 20% or decreased by 1 by 5. It has become 1 minus 1 by 5. 1 minus 1 by 5 is going to be 4 by 5. So, how much is my overall multiplying factor? 23 by 20 into 4 by 5. 4 5 is a 20. It turns out to be 23 by 25. And what does this overall multiplying factor represent? This represents the ratio of final value divided by initial value. So, here if initial value was 25, finally it became 23. So, it has decreased by 2. Decreased by 2 with respect to 25. And so, 2 upon 25 into 100 is going to be 8%. So there is a decrement of 8% in the price. So we can do this question by using successive percentage change. 
we can you do this question by using a uh, multiplying factor or we can do this question by using a traditional method highly recommended methods are successive percentage change or multiplying factor you can use both no issues i hope it is clear to everyone let's move on to next question so let's move on to next question question number 4 just try this question take again just read this question i hope you all have tried earlier also just take 20 seconds to read this question okay so let's start uh, let's just read this question again with me what does this question saying question number 4 is saying a dishonest trader gives 100 g less for every 1 kg of wheat and selling price is 12% more than the cost price what is his overall profit percent uh, how many types of uh, increment here is going on or the you can say uh, first shopkeeper is doing some cheating what kind of cheating the shopkeeper or the trader is doing he is giving 100 g less for every 1 kg and even after doing that cheating what again he is doing he is increasing price by 12% so here we can do this question by again by traditional approach or by alternate approach let's first discuss the traditional approach what is the traditional approach to solve this question so let the cost price of uh, 1000 grams or 1 kg of wheat be rupees 10 you can assume it to be 100 1000 or 1 or whatever you want you can assume it so let the cost price of 1000 grams of wheat be rupees 10 what this is what i have assumed okay so what would be the cost price of 900 grams of wheat it is going to be rupees 9 so how much i have uh, done, how much i am giving to that person i am only giving 900 grams because i am giving 100 grams less so if i am giving 100 grams less then how much i am giving i am giving only 900 grams but this secret only i know being a trader only i know that i am giving 100 gram less i am not telling this to my customer that i am giving you 100 gram less so he must be thinking that how much he has he is receiving he is receiving 1000 grams but how much actually he is receiving he is receiving 900 grams so and the selling so how much uh, so my cost price is going to be for 900 grams or for 1000 grams it is going to be for 900 grams because actually i am giving only 900 so i have to purchase only 900 grams from the market so how much i have to spend only 9 rupees i have to spend so cost price of 900 grams is going to be 9 rupees and what is the selling price of 900 grams because i am to selling only 900 grams the customer knows that it is 1000 but actually it is not how much it is it is only 900 grams what is the selling price of 900 grams it is going to be 11.2 why 11.2 because 12% of 9 is going to be your uh, uh, 10% of, we have just increased the price by so uh, how much percent 12% so cost price the customer is thinking that he is getting 1000 grams so for 1000 gram the cost price in the market is rupees 10 and the trader is saying that i am giving you 12% more than the cost price so what is the 12% of 10 it is going to be 1.2 so how much price he is charging from the customer 10 plus 1.2 not 9 plus 1.2 keep it, keep this thing in mind how much he is charging because customer knows he is getting 1000 grams so and the cost price in the market for 1000 grams is rupees 10 so the trader is saying that i have got 1000 grams of wheat at rupees 10 and i am giving you just by increasing the price by 12% so if price is increased by 12% what is the 12% of 10 it is 1.2 so the selling price of 900 grams of wheat is 11.2 actually it is giving only he is giving only 900 grams but the person knows that it is it is 1000 grams so the difference is clear i hope so how much he is giving only 900 grams giving for how much price for 11.2 rupees 
okay now we know the cost price of 900 grams of uh, trader and the selling price of 900 grams of trader so what is the profit percent it is going to be selling price minus cost price divided by cost price into 100 it turns out to be 24.44 percent which is option number d i hope it is clear to everyone this is very basic method to solve this question please do not solve such question by using this method let us suppose this and suppose this how we are going to solve this question let us just have a look at the alternate approach to solve this question what is happening here uh, a dishonest trader gives 100 gram less for every 1 kg of wheat and his selling price is 12 percent more than the cost price just leave this part aside 12 percent more than para. just take uh, just do it line by line first line is saying what first line is saying to us first line is saying a dishonest trader gives 100 gram less for every 1 kg as we know that trader is giving 100 gram less for 1 kg so his expenditure will be of 900 grams only why of 900 because he is actually giving only 900 grams he is telling i am giving you 1000 grams but he is doing uh, he is telling a lie what he is actually doing he is only giving 900 grams and telling that i am giving you 1 kg so customer to customer is trusting the trader so he says okay just give me 1000 grams so according to customer he is getting 1000 grams but actually how much he is getting he is only getting 900 grams so the expenditure for trader is going to be for only 900 grams not for 1000 grams i hope it is clear so uh, what is the pro percentage profit so how much profit he is getting he is getting a profit of the price of 100 grams which he is not giving so profit percentage is going to be profit upon cp into 100 and how much he is expending he is spending only for 900 for the price of 900 so 100 upon 900 into uh, 100 percent it is going to be 1 by 9 which is 11.11 percent so by first cheating or by giving less how much percentage rich is it is because he is becoming he is becoming 11.11 percent rich just by doing first cheating what first cheating he is giving 100 grams less he if he is giving 100 grams less then he is getting a profit of the price at which 100 gram is bought so he is getting a profit of the price of 100 grams and how much is his expenditure the price of 900 grams and profit percentage is going to be uh, profit divided by cost price into 100 so profit is 100 gram ka price divided by cost price is 900 gram ka price so 100 gram price divided by 900 gram price into 100 percent so price price cancel so it is going to be 100 upon 900 into 100 percent or 1 by 9 or 11.11 percent so by first sitting he is becoming rich by 11.11 percent again he is doing one more kind of uh cheating what he is doing he is taking 12 percent extra or 12 percent more than the cost price so cheating uh cheating but cheating is called as successive cheating or we can use successive wala concept here how much price first he has increased the price by 11.11 percent now again he is increasing the price by 12 percent he has increased the price by 11.11 percent by giving him the less quantity now again he is increasing the price by 12 percent by telling him that i am uh, just increasing the price by 12 percent so how much actually he is increasing he is increasing two successive changes so two successive changes of 11.11 percent and 12 percent it is going to be 11.11 plus 12 plus 11.11 plus 12 into 100 so it is going to be 24.44 percent or again we can do this question by using alternate uh, one more alternate approach which we have discussed earlier by using the multiplying factor what is happening first price is increased by 11.11 percent what is the fraction equivalent of 11.11 percent is going to be 1 by 9 so it will become 1 plus 1 by 9 which is 10 by 9 then again by 12 percent so we can again uh, get the multiplying factor i hope it is clear so what i have done i have bro broken this question into two parts first cheating and the second cheating or first increment and the second increment and increment increment uh, it is going to be successive increment two consecutive increments is going to be the successive so we can use the successive formula here i hope it is clear to everyone okay let's move on to next question question number fifth just read this question take 10 15 seconds 20 seconds to read this question
Okay, I hope you all have read the question. So just start it. Just read once again with me. Brinda and Brinda started business with investment of rupees forty five thousand and rupees fifty five thousand respectively. After X months, Renu joined them with an investment of rupees thirty thousand. Find the value of X if Brinda got a share of rupees eleven thousand out of an annual profit of rupees twenty four thousand. That you need to find out. So, uh, how much did uh, Brinda uh, Brinda's investment it is 45000 and we have discussed in the partnership that the ratio of profits is equal to ratio of product of amount of money invested and the time for which it is being invested so brinda has invested 45000 rupees for how much time for 12 months brinda has invested 55000 rupees again for 12 months and renu has invested 30000 rupees only for 12 minus x months because renu has invested after x months so the ratio of their profits is equal to 45000 into 12 ratio 55000 into 12 ratio 30000 into 12 minus x so after simplifying what is the ratio it is going to be 18 ratio 22 ratio 12 minus x so their ratio of profits is 18 ratio 22 ratio 12 minus x So and the share of Brinda is eleven thousand. So what is the share of Brinda here? Eleven twenty two divided by total. Total is fifty two minus x. How we have reached to this figure? Eighteen plus twenty two plus twelve minus x is fifty two minus x. So twenty two upon fifty two minus x of the total profit. What is total profit? Which is twenty four thousand. This part is equal to eleven thousand. So after solving, we can easily get the value of x to be. Four. So after how many months Renu joined? Renu joined after four months. I hope it is clear to everyone. What what is the logic here? Ratio of profits is the ratio of product of amount of money invested and the time for which it is being invested. This is has been asked in this question only. I hope it is clear to everyone. Let's move on to next question. Question number six. Just try this question. Just uh, read this question once. Okay the question here is find the number of zeros at the end of the product of first 75 natural number what is the product of first 75 natural numbers it is going to be 75 into 74 into 73 into 72 and so on up till 1 and what is this 75 into 74 into 73 and so on up till 1 it is going to be 75 factorial the ratio of product of all the natural numbers up till 75 is going to be 1 into 2 into 3 into up till 75 or you can say 75 into 74 into 73 up till 1 and what is n into n minus 1 into n minus 3 up till 1 it is n factorial so it is going to be 75 factorial so what has been asked find the number of zeros at the end of the product of 75 factorial you need to find out how many zeros will be there at the end of the answer of 75 factorial so how can a new zero is formed new is a new zero is formed by after the multiplication of 5 and 2 product of 5 and 2 will give you a new zero always so 5 into 10 is 5 into 2 is going to give you 10 which is a zero so new zero is formed whenever we multiply 5 by 2 and we know twos will be in abundance because two is a smaller number as compared to five so we need to only calculate how many fives are there in 75 factorial for example 75 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 up till 75 so 5 contains 1 5 10 contains 1 5 15 contains 1 5 similarly 25 contains 2 5 50 contains 2 5 so how many fives are there that we need to find out and what is the easy way to find out how many fives yeah how many any kind of prime number is available in any factorial it is we have we just divide that number uh, the given number the given 75 factorial is a given number and we need to find out how many fives are there so we will divide 75 by 5 and whatever be the answer obtained 75 divide by 5 is going to be 15 so again we will divide that answer by 5 we will do this operation until the question becomes less than the divisor or here the question become less than the 5 so 15 upon 5 is 3 which is less than 5 and just add all of them so 75 upon 5 is 15 and 15 upon 5 is 3 it is going to be 15 plus 3 which is 18 so again i am explaining what i have done here 
I need to find out how many zeros will be there at the end of 75 factorial and how can we do this? We know that a new zero is formed after the multiplication of 5 and 2. So we just need to find out how many 5s are there and how many 2s are there. So 2s will be in abundance or 2s will be more as compared to 5. So we will search for the number which is less. So we just need to find out how many 5s are there in 75 factorial and how to get any how many any prime numbers are there in any factorial we just divide the given number factorial number by the prime number which we need to find out here we need to find out how many fives are there in 75 factorial so we will divide 75 by 5 what i will get 15 again i will divide 15 by 5 up till that question will become less than the divisor so 15 upon 5 turns out to be 3 which is less than 5 and just add all of them. So 15 plus 3, 18. That means 18 fives will be there. So 18 fives after multiplying with 18 twos, it will be formed 18 zeros. So answer here is 18 zeros will be there at the end of 75 factorial. I hope it is clear to everyone. Okay. So let's move on to next question. Question number seventh. Just read this question once. Take 20 seconds. Let me just uh, read this once again for you. A wire is bent in the shape of a circle of diameter 14 cm. It is then strengthened and bent again into a square. Find the area of the square. A wire is in the shape of a circle whose diameter is 14. If its diameter is 14, then what is its radius? It is going to be 7. Now we have just uh, again strengthened the circle and make a square out of that circle so whatever be the perimeter or the circumference of circle it is going to be the same as the perimeter of the square so we can equate their perimeters what is the perimeter of a square it is 4a and what is the circumference of a circle it is going to be 2 pi r here we know the radius is 7 centimeter so we can say 2 pi r which is 2 into 22 by 7 into 7 is 44 which is the circumference of the uh, circle and whatever be the circumference of circle that is going to be the perimeter of the square and what is the formula to calculate the perimeter of the square it is 4 times of side or 4a if a is the side so 4a is equal to 44 so a will become 11 or the side of a square will become 11 if the side of the square is 11 what is the area of the square it is going to be 11 square which is 121 because the area of square is side square i hope it is known to all of you right so what we have done we have just equated the parameters of both the circle as well as the square wire is in the shape of a circle whose diameter was 14 so radius will become 7 so what is the parameter parameter is 2 pi r it is 2 into 22 by 7 into 7 which is 44 so if parameter of the circle is 44 and that would be the parameter of the square also so 44 is equal to 4 times of side of the square so side of the square will become 11 and the area will become 11 into 11 or 11 square which is 121 which is option number B. So answer here is B option. I hope it is clear. Let's move on to next question. Question number 8. Just have a look at this question. Okay, so let's start. Let's just read this question once again. When the price of book is decreased by rupees 20, 
a person can purchase 25 more books for rupees 3000 find the cost of the each book so when the price of book is decreased by rupees 20 whatever be the price earlier if we decrease the price by rupees 20 a person can purchase 25 more books so whatever be the number of books that person was purchasing earlier now he or she can purchase 25 more than that for rupees 3000 for the same amount of rupee which is 3000 rupees you need to find out the cost of the each book what is the cost of each book or the price of each book so let us assume the cost or the price of each book to be rupees x and the number of books purchased by him was y so what is the total expenditure incurred that was xy obviously and what is that xy is equal to 3000 rupees he was spending now what is happening price of the book is decreased by rupees 20 so it will become x minus 20 and the uh, how many books more he is purchasing he is purchasing 25 books more so how many books now he is purchasing he is purchasing now y plus 25 and what is its product it is going to be same 3000 because now also he is spending 3000 only so now we need to solve this so putting the value of y from 1 into 2 we will be getting a quadratic equation in x so just try to do this so what will be the value of y from equation 1 it is going to be 3000 divided by x now put this value in equation 2 what i will get x minus 20 into 3000 divided by x plus 25 is equal to 3000 take the lcm and take x to the other side so x minus 20 into 3000 plus 25 x divided by x but that x would have gone to the that side so it will become 3000 is equal to 3000 x so just multiplying both of them i'll be getting something 3000 x minus 60000 plus 25 x square minus 500 x is equal to 3000 x now we have got a quadratic equation and something is common between them so we have just taken 25 common and 0 divided by 25 will become 0 so x square minus 20 x minus 2400 is equal to 0 will become a quadratic equation and we know how to solve a quadratic equation just by factorizing the middle term so we have just tried to factorize the middle term in minus 60 and 40. So we have taken x as common from first two terms. So it will become x into x minus 60 and 40 for common from last two terms. It will become 40 times of x minus 60. And from these two terms we have taken x minus 60 common. It will become x minus 60 into x plus 40. So x turns out to be either 60 or minus 40. Minus 40 is not possible because price can never be negative. So x will become 60 which is the price of each book which has been asked in the question. So just a clerical works you need to know how to solve a quadratic equation and how to make the equation. So we are just assume the price to be rupees x and the number of books purchased to be rupees y and we know x into y is 3000 uh, because what is total expenditure that is 3000 given in the question and total expenditure is cost of each book into number of books purchased. Similarly, if the price of book is decreased by 20, the new price will become x minus 20. And now ho how many books he has he's been purchasing? He is purchasing 25 more books. So he is purchasing now y plus 25 books. So again, their product is going to be the total expenditure, which is again same 3000. So x minus 20 into y plus 25 will become 3000. So after putting or solving, we can solve this by any method. So we have got a quadratic equation and we have got the value of which has been asked in the question. Next question. Question number 9. Just try this question. Okay, just start for what value of x is the expression mod x minus 5 plus mod x minus 9 is minimum. We need to find out for how many values or for what values of x this expression mod x plus minus 5 plus mod x minus 9 is minimum. So for any value or in interval a, b both included x minus a mod plus x minus b mod is minimum. So mod x minus 5 plus mod x minus 9 will be minimum for each of the value between 5 and 9 including 5 and 9 also 
so answer is going to be option d all of the above but what if we do not know this fact suppose this question came in the exam and we do we do not know this fact that uh, if mod x minus a plus mod x minus b the minimum value will be at all the points between 5 and 9 including 5 and 9 also so suppose we do not know this fact how to solve this question then by using the options what we should we should do we just uh, try to plug in the values which has been given in the question so just try to do that so for first option it is given 6 so if x is 6 what what is going to be the value of this expression it is going to be 6 minus 5 plus 6 minus 9 6 minus 5 is 1 and 6 minus 9 is minus 3 but out of mod it will come out to be 3 and 1 plus 3 will become 4 just hold on after putting the value x is equal to 6 we have got the expressions value is 4 just plug 7 in it what is the answer if we plug 7 in it 7 minus 5 will become 2 and 7 minus 9 will become 2 but after mod it will become 2 2 plus 2 will again will come 4 so I am getting the same value at these two values so obviously the answer has to be the all of the above or we can try it by uh, 8.5 also what is 8.5 minus 5 it is going to be 3.5 and what is 8.5 minus 9 it is 0 0.5 3.5 plus 0.5 will again become 4 so I can say it is giving the same value in this in the case when we are uh, putting any value between 5 to 9 what if, if we put any value which is less than 5 or any value which is 9 it will start increasing let's just try to do it let's just put the value as 4 4 is less than 5 okay so if we plug 4 here what i will get 4 minus 5 will become minus 1 but out of mod it will come out 1 and 4 minus 9 will become how much it will become uh, minus 5 but it will again come out so 1 plus 5 will become 6 so the answer is increasing now values similarly for values greater than 9 what is happening suppose i put 10 here so 10 minus 5 will become 5 and 10 minus 9 will become 1 and 5 plus 1 will again become 6 so the answer is increasing so between 5 and 9 for each value of x the value of this expression is same which is 4 and if we take any value less than 5 or greater than 9 it's the value of x this expression is increasing so we can now generalize this but again if we do not know this fact we can also solve this question by the help of option so answer here is all of the above. I hope it is clear to everyone. Next question. Question number 10. Just try to solve this question. Inequalities. Just, uh, just read the question. Then I will be solving it for you. Okay, let me just do it for you. Find the solution set for the system of equation. Two set of equations are given here. x square minus 7x plus 10 greater than 0 and x square minus 2x minus 3 greater than 0. So you need to find out those set of values of x which will satisfy both of these equations simultaneously. Not only one, they have to satisfy, all those values have to satisfy both the equations simultaneously that has been asked in the question. So let's just do this question first by using a uh, traditional approach. So what is the traditional approach? Solve the inequality 1 and after that solve the inequality number 2. So let's start solving the uh, inequality number 1 which is x square minus 7x plus 10. Now we want to solve this inequality. How to solve it? Factorize a quadratic equation. What about factors will come? x minus 2, x minus 5. So critical points here are 2 and 5. We want greater part. Greater part is going to be less than 2 and greater than 5. We have discussed in the inequalities well section. So after first, first inequality, what I will get? X should be either less than 2 or greater than 5. Or you can plug in the values if you even don't know how to get this. You can get any value uh, less than 2 and any value greater than 5. You will be getting it positive. And if we put any value between 2 and 5, it comes out to be negative. So x less than 2 or x greater than 5 is going to be the solution set of first inequality. Similarly, we need to find out the solution set of next inequality. What is next inequality? It is 
x square minus 2x minus 3 greater than 0. Again, we will factorize x minus 3x plus 1 greater than 0. Again, x less than minus 1 or x greater than 3 is going to be the my solution set for the next inequality. Now, we want the common solution. What is the common solution? x should be uh, less than minus 1 is saying second equation and x should be less than 2 is saying first equation. So, what is the common part? My less than minus 1 is the common part. And for greater, one is saying x should be greater than 5, others is saying x should be greater than 3. So, x should be greater than 5 is the common solution. So, answer is x less than minus 1 or x greater than 5. So, which option is? Option number C is the answer. Now, I am telling you, suppose I do not know anything about inequality and I want to solve this question or I want to get the answer of this question. Can I do this? Yes, of course I can do it. In inequality, we need not to know all of this stuff. How can we do this? Just plug in the value from the options. What I am saying, whatever be the option, they have to satisfy both the inequalities simultaneously. So just let's start. Suppose A option. A option, uh, first, first uh, analyze the option. What options are saying? Options are saying in A option, x is less than 1, minus 1. In B option, x is less than 2. And D option also x is less than 2. And in C option also x is less than minus 1. So there are two values which we need to check. Uh, is x less than minus 1 or is x less than minus, is x less than 2. So let's just take any value between minus 1 and 2. So that I can get whether x is less than 2 or x is less than minus 1 is going to be my solution. Because either of them has to be the solution. So let's take uh, 0. Suppose if I take 0, 0 is the most convenient in this. So between minus 1 and 2, let's take 0. So if x is 0, does both the inequalities hold true? Let's check. For first inequality, it will become 0 square minus 7 into 0 plus 10 greater than 0. So it comes out to be 10, which is greater than 0. So inequality satisfied. But check for second also. What it is giving? 0 square minus 2 into 0 minus 3 greater than 0. That is minus 3 greater than 0. But minus 3 is not greater than 0. That means x is, uh, we cannot put the value of x to be 0. So x less than 2 will become wrong answer. So our b and d option will get eliminated. Because x less than 2, 0 is less than 2. But it is not uh, satisfying inequality number 2. So it is not possible. Now. Answer is either A option or C option. Now, we have used the less than wala for thing and in between A and C, less than uh, x is less than minus 1 is common part. What is different? Greater than wala part. So, either x is greater than 3 or x is greater than 5. So, we will again take a value between 3 and 5. What is the most convenient value between 3 and 5? You can take 4 also. So, if we take 4 and put the value of x as 4 in the equation number 1, what I will get? 4 square is 16. Minus 7 4 is a 28 plus 10. 16 plus 10 will become 26 minus 28 is minus 2. And minus 2 is not greater than 0. That means this is again not the answer. Need not to check for second equation. Answer will become C directly. So, answer is C. That's it. So, we need not to solve traditionally also in this case. We can do it by plugging the values. Again, let me just explain once again what I have done. I have taken less than values or greater than values. For less than in among the options given, either x is less than minus 1 or x is less than 2. So I have taken any value between minus 1 and 2. I have taken 0. But 0 is not satisfying second inequality. So option B and D will get eliminated. Now for greater than sign, I have taken any value between 3 and 5 because x is either greater than 3 or x is either greater than 5. So I have taken 4 from there. So if we plug in 4 in the first inequality, it is not being satisfied. So, again, 4 cannot be the possible solution set here. Uh, so, obviously, x should not be greater than 3 because greater than 3, 4 will come and 4 is not giving a solution set. So, answer will become C here. Thank you.